Level 0. Background Radiation Even in the most remote wilderness, far from cities, machines, and power lines, radiation is never truly absent. This constant natural presence is called background radiation. It comes from tiny traces of radioactive elements in soil and rocks, from cosmic rays streaming in from the sun and distant stars, and even from natural isotopes inside our own bodies, mainly potassium-40. A typical person receives around 0.1 to 0.2 microsieverts per hour at this level. You cannot feel it, smell it, or see it, and the dose is far too small to cause harm. Without sensitive instruments, you would never know it is there. It is as much a part of life on Earth as air or gravity. Level 1, Everyday Low-Level Exposure At this stage, radiation is still harmless, and often comes from ordinary activities. Eating a banana, walking past granite buildings, or living in a brick house adds a tiny increment to your dose because these materials contain naturally occurring isotopes. A typical daily intake here might be 1 to 2 microsieverts, trivial in biological terms. The human body processes these exposures just as it does minerals or trace elements in food. Even consuming large amounts of such items in one sitting would not raise your risk to dangerous levels. Without a Geiger counter, you would never notice it. It blends seamlessly into the background of daily life. Level 2. Slightly Elevated Natural Sources This level occurs in environments where natural radiation is stronger, yet still within safe limits. Spending hours on a commercial flight, living at high altitudes, or working near certain mineral deposits like phosphate rock can result in a single exposure of 5 to 10 microsieverts. Although much lower than any medical risk threshold, such doses are significant enough for scientists to monitor over time. Airline crews, for example, log their flight hours partly to track cumulative exposure. The health impact here is negligible for occasional exposure, but consistent monitoring ensures no unexpected increases go unnoticed. Level 3, Controlled Medical and Occupational Exposure. Radiation at this level is still safe in small doses, but it reaches the point where safety protocols apply. Medical procedures such as computed tomography scans, commonly called CT scans, can deliver several millisieverts in a single session. That is thousands of times more than everyday background exposure. One scan is not harmful, but repeated imaging over short periods can accumulate enough dose to increase long-term risk. In nuclear power plants or radiology departments, workers wear personal dosimeters to track exposure, ensuring annual limits are not exceeded. The effects here are cumulative, not immediate. Each exposure slightly increases the load on the body's DNA repair systems. Level 4. Upper safe limit before biological effects appear. At this point, doses are high enough to cause subtle biological changes if prolonged. Tens of millisieverts delivered over days or weeks can lower white blood cell counts and cause small breaks in DNA even if no symptoms are felt. A full body PET scan, certain industrial radiography work, or short stays in poorly shielded areas near radioactive material can deliver such doses. Strict safety measures apply. Workers use lead shielding, time restrictions, and remote tools. Occasional exposure remains safe, but constant presence without precautions pushes the body toward measurable, though still reversible, harm. This is why governments define maximum allowable doses for workers. Level 5. Threshold of Acute Effects Radiation between 100 and 500 millisieverts in a short period can trigger mild but real symptoms in some people. Fatigue, headaches, or light nausea may appear within hours, signaling that cells in sensitive tissues, like bone marrow, are starting to be damaged faster than they can repair. This level matches what some emergency workers at Chernobyl and Fukushima received in outer contaminated zones. Survival is expected, but so is medical evaluation because cancer risk increases and immunity weakens. Protective suits, strict time limits, and rapid evacuation protocols exist to prevent crossing into far more dangerous territory. Level 6. Onset of Acute Radiation Syndrome A short-term, whole-body dose around 0.5 to 1 sievert is where physicians watch for acute radiation syndrome. Acute means the dose arrives within minutes to hours, not over months. The first measurable sign is a drop in lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell, within 24 to 48 hours. Some people develop nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. Others feel only tired. Tissues that divide quickly, bone marrow, intestinal lining, hair follicles, are the most vulnerable. 
Treatment at this level focuses on monitoring and prevention, blood tests, infection precautions, hydration, and rest. Most healthy adults recover fully if the exposure stops. The main long-term concern is a small increase in lifetime cancer risk. Level 7, Hematopoietic Syndrome Dominates. Between roughly 1 and 2 sieverts, symptoms become more consistent, and bone marrow damage becomes clear. Early vomiting is common within hours. By day 2 or 3, lymphocyte counts drop sharply, followed by neutrophils and platelets over the next 1 to 3 weeks. Lower neutrophils mean infections become harder to fight. Fewer platelets cause easy bruising and bleeding. Treatment includes protective isolation, antibiotics, antifungals, growth factors to boost white blood cells, and transfusions if platelets fall. Mortality here is low with modern care, but recovery is slower. Hair loss may appear after two weeks. Temporary infertility can occur depending on dose and organ shielding. Preventing any further exposure is critical. Level 8, Transition to Severe Acute Radiation Syndrome. Around 3 to 6 sieverts, marrow injury is severe and overlaps with gastrointestinal syndrome. After a brief delay of 1 or 2 days, symptoms return hard. Persistent vomiting, watery diarrhea, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalances, compounded by immune collapse. Without aggressive treatment, broad-spectrum antimicrobials, intravenous fluids, nutritional support, and in some cases stem cell therapy the risk of sepsis and internal bleeding rises sharply. Even with the best care, outcomes in the upper range are uncertain. The intestinal lining, which normally renews every few days, cannot recover quickly enough. Skin may redden and peel in exposed areas. Dose reconstruction from symptoms and lab results guides doctors in planning treatment. Level 9, Central Nervous System Syndrome. At more than 8 to 10 sieverts received over minutes or less, the central nervous system becomes the main target. Symptoms appear within 15 to 30 minutes, intense nausea, vomiting, dizziness, confusion, loss of coordination, and seizures. High energy radiation damages brain cells directly, disrupts blood vessels in the brain, and causes swelling. Autonomic control breaks down, leading to cardiovascular collapse. Supportive measures like anticonvulsants, oxygen, and fluids may only delay the outcome. Irreversible brain and body failure typically causes death within 24 to 48 hours. Surviving longer than two days is rare and not associated with recovery. Level 10, Theoretical Maximum Lethal Dose. Above about 20 sieverts delivered instantly, survival is impossible. This could happen inside the core of an unshielded operating reactor or within meters of a nuclear detonation at the instant of emission before the heat or blast even arrive. The energy is so extreme that DNA, proteins, and cell membranes are destroyed in milliseconds. The nervous system stops functioning almost instantly. The heart can stop within seconds. Even if consciousness lasts briefly, every critical system, nervous, circulatory, and respiratory, is destroyed at once. Such doses are only modeled in simulations or measured remotely. Level 10 is the absolute endpoint of what ionizing radiation can do instant and total biological failure before the body can respond. Don't just watch the world, subscribe and understand it.